Hi and welcome to the sixth episode of the design system series for Figma. Now the first time that I used union and subtract I was mind blown because it changed the perception of how simple illustration can be. Now if you look at this icon that we created earlier it's simply having two circles one subtracting the other. Today we're gonna learn how to create some of these icons from scratch using very basic boolean techniques. Let's head over to our design system. We're going to duplicate this one. So the frame. We name it to icons and we name the title to icons. Let's delete the content. So let's zoom in and create a square. So let's say 100 by 100. Let's change the color style to light gray and set a corner radius of 10. Whenever you design icons, I suggest zooming in a lot so that you can see all the details and really focus on creating the icon itself. So let's start with the simplest icon, which is the close icon. We're gonna create a line that is 30 by two Set a corner radius of 1 and then set the rotation to 45 degrees angle. Now we're going to duplicate it, command D, and then set the rotation to minus 45 degrees angle. And here I can just select the two of them, use Boolean, and do Union. And there you go. We can change this to black and center it within the square. Now this is going to complement nicely the way we shape our hamburger menu because what we want to do is to have these two little lines really transition into a close button. So that's why we're using exactly the same properties. So as you can see, when you do union, you can basically transform any single shape with another one to create a new icon. Now let's try subtract. So I'm gonna duplicate this and create a rectangle that is 28 by 18. Set a corner radius of 2. Let's zoom in a little bit and just create a simple line 2 by 26. And now selecting the two of them, we're going to go to booleans and subtract. And there you go. We have a card icon now. Let's make it black. So you can see it's super simple to create a new icon using subtract. So one shape is going to subtract the other like this. And then we can customize it the way we want after. Now, let's create another one. We're going to use intersect now. So, let's start with a 50 by 50 circle. And then duplicate it with a distance of 30. Select the two of them and go to boolean intersect. Like this. Now we have an eye icon. Now we need a circle that is about 12 by 12. We just need to flatten this one. So let's go to here and select flatten. Once it's flattened, you can basically use union or whatever boolean again with another shape. So let's select the two and do subtract. And now we have an eye icon. We can make it black. Now I hope you've been impressed a little bit by now but if not let's go to the next one. I'm gonna duplicate this and set it to 50. Let's create a circle of 40 by 40. Center it and then duplicate it. Set it to 10 from the right, 20 from the top. Like this. Duplicate it again 
and 20 from the left like this so let's select all three circles and go to boolean and select exclude and there you go this is kind of neat you can even add a text so press T A and A so one capital and one lowercase set it to let's say we're gonna scale it down using K roughly like this and put it as part of exclude and voila we can make the whole thing black let's center it cool let's zoom out a little bit see our creations not too bad let's prepare a few more canvases in advance for us to work on so duplicate 50 command D command D command D let's zoom in to this one shift 2 let's create a 40 by 40 square it seems that we've been fighting a lot with making it black so why don't we set it as a default property so we're gonna click here make it black first and go here go to edit and set default properties boom so the next time that we create a 40 by 40 square it's black by default okay with this square we can set it to 45 degrees angle set a corner radius of 2 and then duplicate this about 10 from the left now I'm gonna select both squares go to boolean subtract like this now you can see that it's kind of nice it has this rounded corner here here and here but it doesn't have it here so we're gonna use flatten so that we can control those corners and this is a very popular technique we're going to flatten this first now that it's its own vector I can press enter and then I can go to each point this one and this one and set the corner radius to 2 boom now that we have one part we can just duplicate this and set it so that it rotate to the other side and there you go we have our icon for code we just need to union both of them so let's center it voila let's zoom out a little bit you can see that it's a little bit big so I can always use K to resize it and make it smaller like this and the same can be applied to the other icons as well so that's the power of being able to edit and create your own icons from scratch is to understand how it works and how you can customize it so that it fits the need for the types of icons that you want for your design. I'm going to leave this one as it is just because it's going to be used for a different purpose than let's say this one or this one. Let's zoom in to this one and let's create a new icon. Now I'm going to show you how to use these different shapes such as the polygon and the star. So let's start with a star. Let's make it let's say 50 by 50 center it first if you mouse over the star you can set the count for example up and down so I'm gonna set it to 12 like this for the ratio I'm gonna set it to 60% and for the radius set it to 3 or 2.72 I'm just gonna put a circle of 24 by 24 right in the middle selecting both use subtract and now we have a cog and what is cool about this is that you can really customize any way you want really you can make it as many counts as you want you can set 
so that it's very spiky you know you can really do all kinds of things with this now let's go to the next one and play with the polygon shape I'm gonna go to shape tools set the polygon and create something at let's say 40 by 40 set it center in the middle change the radius let's say to 2 and again I can change the count as well as many as I want in this case I'm going to keep it to 3 I'm going to rotate it by minus 90 degrees and voila you have a play button and you can customize the shape of that play button the way you wish so with this I can just create a circle so let's say 50 by 50 center it and select the two but make sure that the play is above so that this subtracts from this so again using subtract and now I have a play button like this of course I could make it smaller maybe 32 and you can move a little bit to the left so that it's visually more centered all right last but not least let's play a little bit with the arrow tool so this one I'm just going to move it from right to left let's say 50 x0 and then let's center it now this arrow can have a stroke that is much fatter so let's say 5 but it also increases the size of the arrow which is really nice so the only thing that's left is really making this point here to be rounded so what you can do is press enter and just select this point and go to stroke options and set it to cap round you can even change it to square or another arrow a triangle arrow anything you wish but in this case it's just gonna be round awesome so as you can see creating icons using booleans and basic shapes is really not that scary and you can create a ton of icons such as the ones that you just created using these basic techniques in the next section we're going to take it up a notch we're going to learn a lot more about vector points how to customize them how to move them around how to bend them how to use the Bezier curves so that you can curve them the way that you wish and last but not least we're going to learn about the vector network so that we can create a web of vector lines that moves against a single vector point so i hope to see you in the next session thanks very much